All right, I'm going to continue here with the UEFI development today. I don't have anything in here, so I'm going to get the repo. I'm on Linux, Alpine Linux specifically. Um, get clone, get at github.com. I don't have my repo on this uh, setup right here, so I'm going to get that right quick. I just like the development environment better here, but what am I going to do today? Um, I didn't recurse submodules, I just realized. <laughs> Got to make sure we do that so everything's initialized. I'm just not used to doing that in my projects yet. But okay, what am I going to do today? I want to expand upon the stuff for Simple Text Output Protocol and maybe add in Simple Text Input Protocol as well. Uh, the only thing I really have on Linux, other than the repo right now, is the spec in my other workspace. So I was looking at the output string and stuff. I might move that to the main one here when I'm in it. But anyway. I want to make sure this is made. I should add a make target to make this really. Just make sure the exe is there because that will fail if not. All right, but what am I going to do? We're going to make it. I don't have exe files. That's true. I might make different ones for Linux and Windows, like different targets. I might do that. Maybe off camera. I don't necessarily need a VHD for Linux either. So let's say we're not doing that. And it should make it, and permission is denied because I'm running the bat file, yes. Yeah, I'll probably make separate stuff for Windows and Linux. I just want to make sure stuff loads and it works. Testing. All right, you can see that. That works. So that's good. But I did find out my, my reasoning for stuff failing, or not failing, but having the warning for clang. It doesn't there because we made the file make clean. So we get these warnings here, right, for linking errors. Linker input unused for some of these things. And I found out the, the issue with that is because we first make the thing, right, with dash C, although it doesn't show that. Or here, yeah, it does actually. So we're compiling just into the dot O, the object file, from the C source, even though that's not in the make file. But when it makes the dot O into the final target, the executable, that I have added, so the, the output is um, suppressed. So let's not suppress that and look at it. We can fix that error here. And it does it here and it does not get the error. So I just want to show the contrast between just making the dot C into the dot O and the dot O into the target. We don't get the error here because these are linker flags. The, the subsystem EFI application entry are specifically passed to the linker. They're not needed to link a C into a dot O, it's just compiled. We don't use linking at that stage. So I can suppress those by kind of separating things out a bit making like C flags versus LD flags, stuff like that. So I might try and do that here. Let's say we have a separate target. Well, we have this. Um, I'll name this sources just so everything's plural here. We have the dependent files upon those. So that's all right. So we're making objects, but we don't have anything. We don't have a recipe to make objects here because we don't need one by default. Make has that built in to make C projects. So it'll build C files into .o files into whatever target you set. But we can add another one here and that's fine. And objects we can say are dependent on the sources. We don't have anything to build the sources, but we'll see if that works or not. I'll basically do this, but we'll do a dash C for the C flags, which are gonna be all these. And these actually will be part of linker flags. So let me do that. I'll have different ones for GCC as well, but that's all right. So let's say LD flags will equal something for GCC. We'll have basically these. I won't do that. And we'll have no standard live. No standard live is technically a linker flag, so we don't need that just for the C compiling. But I will need that for Clang as well. Let's say if you want GCC. You can do it that way. Otherwise, we'll have different setup for Clang linker flags as well. And that will be these linker things here. I probably will have to copy the target just in case. And we'll also do the no standard live. So a little bit more verbose, of course, a lot more verbose, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. 
I just don't want those errors and things to mess up later on. So I want to do things a little bit more correctly here. So here we only have the C flags to make the objects from a source. We're only using these things and that is okay. Kling, I'll have the target regardless. This includes the target here for GCC. And for the object, we'll do dash O and we'll do LD flags instead of C flags, but still using the same C compiler there. So all that does is separate out our linking and our compiling into two separate steps and hopefully get rid of those warnings there for, for Clang, if not GCC stuff later on. So does that make a difference? Oh, it does. We don't get the warning anymore and the test still runs. Okay, so we're good there. We just run different targets for linking. And let's see if GCC works. Um, I actually just need to do one comment because I can have the line continuation there. So let's do it for GCC and test. After I make clean, I don't get any errors. It still loads the thing. Okay, we're good to go there. I just want to make sure they both worked with these separated out stuff. So, okay. I'll do clink for now and hop back and forth between them, but all right. So I should make separate things probably for Linux and Windows. For write GPT, I'll just say like, let's say uncomment CC LD flags. And I'll say uncomment, I'll say disk image exe for Windows, disk image and uh, I'll say shell script, and I'll have one for Linux. So I'm using these two. So let's say Linux, we have disk image program or something. We'll just call it write GPT, that's all right. And then we'll have QEMU script I'll call it qemu.shell. So we'll, we'll have these two things for Linux and Windows. Hopefully these will work on both. I'm just gonna name them. One ending with an exe and one ending in .bat because that's the only difference I'm doing for these. So then down here we can say, I want to run those. So disk image program, make sure that's there. And qemu script. And that should work the exact same. We can compile it just to be sure. And it runs it okay. So we get a little space there, but that's all right. Forget, now I didn't put a space down in there. It just put a space there automatically. I'm probably ending in a space. Yeah, that's why, okay. All right, but I haven't done anything yet. So let's actually do some stuff. I'm not using these things yet, I could make stuff for those. Uh, we can make globals here that we set for the table and the console out and other things, but I want to mess with some more stuff first. So let's say we want to change the colors, we'll say. Let me look at that, which I have in Workspace 2. All right. So changing the colors is going to be somewhere near output string. We have box drawing characters. I forget where exactly. Let's look. Set attribute. Let's go to there. So simple text output protocol should have set attribute with this, this as the function signature. This is cut off a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I just pressed something I didn't want to press. Uh, Keybinds, they're always fun. All right, so we have output string. All right, we could also see and set the query. We could query what mode we have and set the current mode if we want. I just want to change some colors right now to, to mess with that. So this will be EFI text set attribute. That's the name of the function pointer there. And that's probably capital S. So we'll go with that. That'll be before clear screen. So we'll just put it here. If I text set attribute near in 
All right, so this takes the output protocol as of this parameter, because we're trying to implement OOP and C, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. And we have an attribute parm, which is a UN64 effectively for 64-bit. All right, that is an attribute. So what do we do with the attributes? They have them over here. We have basically the VGA colors, zero to 15, and then we can use it for foreground and background as well, except the background ones are limited from zero to seven. So only up to light gray for the background, and they just have it in the top four bits instead of the bottom four bits. I don't know why they didn't want to implement the other ones, but they didn't, so that's okay. We also have a macro here to set it by just shifting over by a nibble <laughs> for the background color. Easy enough. So I'll probably define that here as well. Under set attribute, let's just do, we'll define some colors here. So attributes, these will be text colors. I'm not going to do all of them, but we can do most of them. Or I can just write them all out here, that's, that's fine. Uh, we have it to F, so we'll just print them all out. I know there's a way to do sequences in Vim. I don't remember how to do it, unfortunately. We have eight. Look at this, we have bright as eight and then dark gray is also eight. They're both eight. I don't know if they're both supposed to be eight. I'm assuming they probably are though. That's not great. So black, blue, green, cyan. We have red, we have magenta. We have brown, which originally was kind of like a yellow or an orange, but I guess it's a brown now. Brown chicken, brown cow, you know how that is. We have light gray, we have bright, we have dark gray, which is defined as now, is this supposed to be like a note? <laughs> or is this supposed to be, no, this is this ord with that, which is just bright. So we could, they, they, but whatever. They didn't mean to put the backslash there, they're just saying it's ord with it. You know, we're defining dark gray as this, and it equals eight, I suppose. Or this is a special thing there. So if we put in dark gray, it'll input this code and it'll also input that, I guess. I don't know. I'll just see what happens. <laughs> we'll just write it like that. It's kind of jank though. Alright, we'll have, oh. Light blue, we'll have light green, light cyan. Light red, light magenta, probably eye searing. Or maybe not. Yellow and white. Okay, then we have the background colors. So I'll just put background colors. Fly background. So these are just the primary, or not the primary, the foreground colors, but in the top four bits is all. down a little bit, thank you. Cyan, red is four. And then magenta and then brown. And light gray. For seven, okay. So do not use background XXX values with this macro. Wonder why they would say that. 
Slip color values in the raw form. Oh, because it's already in the top four bits, it's not going to work. That's fair. Black to white for background. Only the first seven are acceptable. Do not use background. Yeah. That makes sense. Foreground, background as foreground ord with background. Shifted left by four. And that just puts, if we do zero through seven, it just moves up the four bits, moves it into the top nibble, so it'll function as these colors as the background. And that's all that's doing. Uh, so we can try and change the color now, see if it works, see if it compiles, if all that is good. Let's move this to two. That didn't work, I meant to move this. There we go, the two. <laughs> I get my keybinds correctively corrected. So I cleared it right now, it's black on white, and we wrote that. What I can do is if I set attribute, and this will change the color, but not the full screen, just the next line of text. So let's say we have, um, I don't really know, what do we want to do? Uh, the hot dog colors, like yellow on red. We'll do that. So we'll do foreground and background. Background can be red. So set text colors, and that's a macro, but we can just do that. And we need to call the function for that. So it'll be set attribute, give it this, and then we have to give it the attributes. So the attribute can be this value here. So let me do that. So the attribute we're gonna give foreground, yellow, background, red. And then we'll wait. And we need to write something else so we can test that something actually did work. So write string in new colors. And we'll say, you know, hot dog color test. We'll do that. And I'll put another, another new line there. So a new line in between, CRLF in between. So it's on its own. All right. So call to undeclared function. It does not support implicit function, de function declarations. Set attribute did not work. Because I probably can't type things. Did I write this file? I think I did. If I text attribute, not set attribute. It's called text attribute. My bad. Hey, there we go. Okay. So there we go. We got a test there. It's yellow, yellow on red. That just assumed, well, that just assures that we can write, you know, different colored text and that should work. And if we clear the whole screen to a color, we should be able to be, you know, in that new color as well. So if we set yellow on red, before we clear the screen, it should clear it to that color. So let's put that before. We clear the console and we'll write testing, but I won't write the other thing. Okay, so now the whole screen is yellow on red and it writes the text in there, right? So it writes that there. All right, that just proves that we can change the colors, which is pretty nice. So what else can we do? We have more that we can mess with in EFI world. We can set the cursor, we can enable the cursor, which just prints like a, it'll print a block or an underline, whatever the cursor character is. We can see what text mode we're in and go to set a mode. So we can probably look at that stuff. Let's query a mode here. And I'll just put it on the front again. Move that there, all right. So query mode. Where is that within my text output protocol? Let's add these things here. So query mode, it's gonna be EFI text. Query mode, set mode will probably be, if we're going by naming here, EFI text set mode. I'll just set that up here first, just in case. Just 
just line all these up so it looks a little bit better. All right. So we'll set up stuff for query and, and set mode here, which are going to be after output string, it looks like. I don't know if I'll have a need for test string unless we're writing really weird stuff later. And that's just if I text string, okay. So let's do query mode. Just give it a number, the number we want to query to get the parameters for, and it will return a couple things. It'll return the number of columns and rows for this text mode by dereferencing a pointer that is passed in. We could also add testing for errors and stuff. That might be good. It will return unsupported if the mode isn't right. So all devices should support at least 80 by 25, depending on what your stuff boots up in. Um, I think mine is either usually 80 by 25, at least for emulation, or it's whatever the highest thing is that it supports. On hardware, mine usually defaults to whatever the highest mode it supports for the current graphics mode that's set. So if it's 80 by 25, that's fine. But if we have a screen that can support larger, usually it's set to the larger one, at least on my stuff I've found in the past. But OK, let me set up text mo or uh, set mode as well. It's going to be dot six. Okay, that should set it. We can check if it works with success or not. So what this should do when it sets the mode is clear. Clear to the current background color and put the cursor at zero, zero. That doesn't mean that will happen. Sometimes it doesn't, but it should do that. It should work the same as a clear screen, but be in a new mode. So you'd have to redraw whatever text is on the screen if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to do that. So we should have access to set mode and query mode. Okay. All right. So what do we what do we want to do with these? Well, first I can see what modes we have and we can print info for that and then we can set the mode that we want maybe by using input. But first I'm just going to print out cuz we're still in print land. I'm going to print out what modes we have. Uh, let me change this to like I usually like yellow on blue, but you can change these colors to what you want. But I'll set the colors here. The yellow on blue, we'll do testing. Let's say we have, um, we'll say we have text modes, right? Say we have a bunch of text modes here and we'll, we'll write those out. So we might need another thing first, if I remember right. And that is the mode here. <laughs> So we can either query the current mode and look at what we have on boot, or we can call query itself and get that. So let me actually do that first. Let me set up the mode structure. I didn't think of doing that. Sorry about that. Let's do that first. Go here. So is this the mode? Yeah, here's the simple text output mode, which should be what that is. Yeah, let's do this first. forgot about this stuff. So we have a maximum number that we can choose. And our current number might be max. It might be a lot less than the max. You never know, but that's all right. Current settings will have a mode. Whatever mode we're currently on, 
we'll have whatever maybe this is the text foreground at and background for the attribute i'm assuming maybe it'll query that cursor column cursor row wherever the cursor is currently at on the screen which should be zero based indexing because it starts at zero zero and if the cursor is visible or not And that is simple text output mode. Okay, does this say here? It doesn't say. I guess we have it here. Yeah, the current output attribute, and that'll be for the colors. Number mode supported by query and set, the text mode that we're currently set to, or for this output device. So let's change that to EFI, or just a simple, simple text output mode. Is it still a pointer? It is still a pointer, okay. Just making sure. All right, well, we can see what current mode we have. Let's do that. So let's say current text mode and we'll have other ones down here, which we'll call query mode. And we'll have set maybe all the way down here later on. So we'll have the current, let's say we have available. All right, so, so current, I'm gonna have a loop here. And we should have a mode set on boot and it'll be from system table, from con out. I'll probably set some globals here I don't know if I want it in like a separate file that I have other library code in later, or if I just want it in this main file. Right now I'll just put it in the main file, that's fine. I might have a separate uh, function for it though. I'm just gonna separate things out here. Good old text style. So just for my functions, I'm gonna have double bars and for other stuff I might have single bars. This is just to delineate the code when I'm skimming it, but. Anyway, let's, we'll have set global vars or something, that's fine. Which is kind of useless when I'm gonna call the function the same thing, but it's, it's, uh, it's whatever. I'll have it be a void, it's gonna take in nothing. It's gonna return nothing, but I'll have some global variables, right? So let's set up those here, global variables. And let's say we have a console output, which would be con out, but these will be pointers. I guess they'll just be pointers. Should we make them, we shouldn't make them void pointers, right? No, so system table con out. What is the type of that? Should have that in the system table. So console out is simple text output protocol. Yeah, so let's do that. So simple text output protocol pointer console out, which we'll set probably to this one, or I can call it C out, C in, something like that. We'll say C out. And this is just to cut down on some of this boilerplate of typing system table, dereferencing for console out, dereferencing again. I'm just kind of doing that stuff here. I don't necessarily have to set them to null, but I'm going to set them to null anyway. We'll have input protocol CN. And we can probably do standard error for writing errors as well in the future, but I don't have that right now. So let's say we start with these. I'll have boot services and runtime services later as well. Right now those are void pointers. So I'll just mark it like this. I'll have BS and RS, that's fine. because those will become very important later on. But right now we'll just have these. So set global variables, we'll effectively, we'll set C out into the system table. We can pass in the system table, I guess. If we wanna have things be sort of more pure functions here. So sys table con out. This is a pointer, so we'll do that here as well. Right now this probably looks like, why are you doing this? A lot of boilerplate for no reason. Well, 
that's just the setup. Later we might have other initialization logic and it might be part of like a library or something like how GNU EFI has their stuff set up. You initialize first, that does this among other things. But then after we do that, we can just have that be like the first thing we do to cut down on a boilerplate here. So I call it set, um, I'll call it init. So init global variables, we'll pass in the system table. That way instead of system table con out reset, we can do C out reset just for a little bit less stuff to write. So that's not as bad. We can have other stuff in the future that makes things even better, but okay. So we can look at C out mode and get the text mode stuff that we're looking at. So let's just do that, you know, first off. So how do I do that? We're printing output strings, right? That's the only built-in native functionality and we don't have an OS. We don't have really a libc unless we port one or, or use some library that's already made. But for this stuff, I'm gonna have to print out, say, int32 values. Those are numbers. Right now we can only print out strings. So it'll probably look kind of wonky, but we can try to do that. Or we can write some helper functions. So we'll probably do that actually. And a really good one is to have printf. So I might move this out later. But that's all right. Printf's always fun, so we can start with that. It'll be a subset of printf. And we'll just pass back like a boolean. Because I think in efi.h I have standard bool. I do, okay. So this is going to be a sort of EFI handled printf, so I might have to call it like printf char 16 if you want to not upset, you know, the, the gods with that, but that's all right. But I'm going to have a, a char 16 string, a format string, and then we'll have, you know, variable args here. So in EFI.h we're not using it, but in this we are. So I think it's standard arg.h, and this is included in a freestanding environment. You can use var args. So that's why I'm doing this. It makes it a lot easier than having to know necessarily what ABI you're working with, Sys5 or Microsoft, and having to move things out um, in assembly from the stack into variables and set up a sort of register context like that. We can just use var args because it's built in to freestanding environment through Clang and GCC as the compiler. So that works. But this will just be a subset of printf. So we can start by just printing strings here. And the reason also I made these things global is so we can use them wherever. So that's nice as well. So we want to start by printing strings. Let's just do that. So let's say, we'll say i start at zero. We'll say format i is not, I guess, a null, which would be, we can do that with a char 16t literal for a null. So we'll just move things there and we'll say if, if format i is a percent and it's gonna be char 16t. So if it's a percent, we'll say we'll work like regular printf and that'll be the start of a formatted string. So we'll do stuff for that. You know, grab next arg from input args and we need var args here, which is what va list, is it va start, I think? Format, I don't remember. So, <laughs> oh, this is great. I don't remember. Um, C has that. Okay. It's not VA list. It's VA arg. So VA start. So VA start is a macro, initializes the use, VA arg. So we do have, oh, VA list is the type. Okay. So we have VA list. We can set up as the type. Okay. I don't remember how this works, <laughs> to be honest with you. So we set up a list and we do last. Then arg, we call it with the list in the next type, and then end, we call it with the list. Okay. And we don't necessarily need to worry about copy right now. All right, so va list, we'll say args, and va start, we'll say args and format, which is gonna be the last thing we're looking at, which is the first thing there. And then for each of these, we'll grab the next arg, like I think va arg. Um, 
um, and then give it the type, right? Uh, yeah, we give it the list and the type we're looking at. Okay. So the list will be args, the type will be whatever the type is. All right, we'll do that. So, okay. And at the end, we'll do VA end with args. Okay, so if it's not a formatted string, we'll say we're not going to worry about that. First off, we'll do I++ here. Print next character. So we'll do that. So let me have something else as well. Um, we'll just have a character here, char, I don't know. I don't want to call it char, C. People like doing C. This will be the next character in the formatted string. Uh, actually, if we want to make it a string, it needs to end with a null. So let me do that. Let's make it two. I'm not going to initialize this because we need a mem copy. If we want to do freestanding and not use the standard live, we need to provide our own mem copy and mem set functions. Um, and if we need those, we'll get compiler errors because it won't find symbols for them because we don't have any yet. So I will write those in a bit. Right now we don't need them. So, okay. Da, 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 da. So I'm not going to initialize this to null here, but I will do it here. This is not really the best way of doing this, but it's a little bit more succinct <laughs> to just do it both on one line. That's That's not great. But normally you just... Um, initialize it right to null, but again, I don't have a mem set yet. I can write, I can write that in a bit though. So I'll do place initializing this with mem set and use um, initializer. I don't know. Not a good comment. That's okay. All right, but we'll initialize these both to null. That way we can set the first character to something and then print it out as a string because the string will end with null. If it's just a single character, we don't really have a print single character function in UEFI by default. We only have output string, which needs a null terminated string. So that's why I'm doing it like this, kind of bass backwards in a way, but oh well. Print next character, let's say uh, C0 is going to be format I++, plus plus, so we move past it. And then we'll print that out with C out, output string, give it C out, and the string will be C. So, uh, we can call this string. String makes a little bit more sense, right? Because it's more than just a character. Let me do that. Okay. And then we'll have incremented it, we'll move on, we'll go up here. I guess we don't need to do plus plus because this already does that here. We do need it here though, and that's okay because we're moving past this in the input. So that'll print a single character. We might make it separate it out later, but all right. We want a next input here. Let's say we'll work with like ints or uints eventually. For right now we'll just do this. So we'll set up a VA list. We won't have anything currently. Or wait, we can start with strings, I guess. Yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that. So let's switch on format i, now that we did this. Let's say we have a string like an s, right? Which I think I can do this. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Say the grab next argument type from input args and print it. So this won't be percent %s, this will be whatever the type of that is, which is char 16 pointer, effectively. So maybe I should put that in parentheses, I don't know, we'll do that. So that'll say this is a type, it is a pointer to char 16, which could be a string, an array of char 16 values our 16t values, which is going to be a, a string that we're printing. So we'd call the format with, you know, print f percent s string, and we want to be able to print this string. So that's what this is doing. It's moving past the percent, getting the s, saying this string is a string of char 16t values for UEFI.
we need to set that equal to something. That something will be a string. Um, we could have this be its own scoped thing, which is fine. Let's do that. A string to print. Now that won't be this string. I don't really like shadowing variables though, so I'll just, I guess I'll call it like this. <laughs> Uh, my naming's not going to be very good right now, but that's all right. But we'll have a string, we'll set it equal to this pointer, and then we want to print out that pointer. So let's call output string for that string. Assuming it's null terminated and everything's right, we should probably check error conditions, but right now I'm not going to. But if we get that and it works, hopefully, then I will be incremented, so it would be percent. We'd increment to the S, we'd go past that, and it'd go on to something else. Okay. So we'll see if this works for a basic printing out strings sort of thing here. And we'll say we have defaults. We don't have anything. Let me do that as well. Let's print out a string and we'll say... Invalid. I don't know. Invalid format specifier... Um, and then we'll print out the, uh, the character here. I'll print a space and then I'll print out whatever the thing was. So let's do a literal percent and that'd be format I, right? Cause that's what we're switching on. Yep. Okay. And then this is why I wanted print F cause you have to do <laughs> multiple args and print out different things. It's kind of annoying. You have a lot of boilerplate here. And I'll print out a, uh, a new line after that, I guess, and break. I'll actually leave the whole for loop, maybe, and go down here. Yeah, I probably should do that. Okay. This is not great either, but let's have a label. Everyone loves go-tos, right? <laughs> I don't have, like, a leave loop statement, you know. We have a break, but that breaks from the switch, not from the for loop, so not great. Well, that's all right. So what all did I mess up? Probably 5,000 things. Undeclared identifier, we don't have null. Ooh, that's not good. We can get null though. I believe it's in standard lib. So we need it for null. I believe that's in there. Okay, there we go. Except that's not found. It must not be in there because that includes other things like memset and other stuff. Um, What includes? What includes null? I do not remember. Do we have null just on here? We don't. I know it's in a few different things. But I don't remember exactly where it's at. So here we go. So standard def, okay. Not standard lib, standard def, or string, or char, time, locale, IO. It is in standard lib, but we don't have access to that. Standard def, I think we do with a freestanding environment. So I'll try that. Or I can define it myself if we don't have it. But that seemed to have worked. Okay. Unknown type name, simple text input protocol, did you mean output? Oh, because we don't have that yet. That's true as well. We just have voids for those, right? Probably. Yeah, I just have a void. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I had this here. That's a void. Okay. I forgot that I did not do anything. We'll do void. Expected a type for char 16. Do I not have that as a type? Maybe it doesn't like the parentheses. I figure it would be okay. Maybe it doesn't like the parentheses. Okay, it just didn't like the parentheses. Okay. So unsigned short, yep, take the address with ampersand. Um, yes, right, that's true. So this is just pointing to a single char 16 value, and we need to point to the string, which is the address of that value in the array. Yeah, that makes sense. So we're not getting a single value, we're getting the address of that value followed by other ones forming a string. So that's what we need to do there. 
This one works because we're getting the pointer, not just the single character in the array. That doesn't, so I have to do that. Non-void function does not return. Okay. I know it doesn't do anything right now, but at least we prove that we can compile and print text for, you probably didn't see that, because it's very tiny. Print text for current text and available. So nothing's there, but that proves the colors and stuff works. Non-void does not return a value, 61. Yes, that's true. I have FG, nope. All right, turn true on success. Actually, we can return here, but I do want this to run first. Hmm. Let's have bool results equal nothing. Let's we'll have bool result. <laughs> False, even though I'll set it to false. Although we don't really need to do it if we're just doing this, but that's fine. I'll at least get rid of the uh, warning there. Okay. Keep forgetting it. So I'm not doing control Z. That's what I mean to be doing there. All right. Uh. Okay, so we can try and print out some strings and see if that works here. I'll do a test for that. We'll say blah, blah, blah. So print F, print F will do output string. So I do need to call it still with the little u if I want to do literals instead of variables here. So let's just say testing print F. We'll have percent S and we'll send um, Blah, blah, blah. That'll be our test string. And we'll put a new line in there. Actually, we can put it right after S and see if that works. So I'll put a couple here. So this will be one line down again. All right. Hey, there we go. I know how to write print Fs, I swear. Blah, 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 it prints it out. Hey, that works. Okay, so what can we do past that? We want to print out the current mode stuff that we have. And that is stuff like these numbers here, max mode and everything. So let's do that. So instead of testing print F, we'll print out, what, what will we print out? Let's do mode. We'll do percent D and I'll, I'll test these things out, but Let's have mode, let's have, I'll do these on separate lines here. Attribute, we can try for percent %x if we want to do that. Um, let me do the D first. Giggity, right? That's what she said, but we'll do some other stuff here. Mode, attribute, cursor, column, and row. I'm just testing that we can print out numbers here after we put this in, and we'll have visible, which should just be a zero or a one. So I'm just gonna print out an int for that. To do, we'll do change to percent x and print hex instead. I'll do that. Okay, so these will be mode, which is gonna be C out mode. Um, and mode is a pointer, so we'll do mode. So that's a very awkward name. The structure <laughs> within a mode, a simple text output mode, the structure there is mode and the, the current mode is mode. So that's not great. So let me actually do this max. The max mode. And we'll have whatever the current mode is. Current mode. So this will be the max mode. This one will be mode mode. It'll be a la mode. This one will be attributes. Cursor column, cursor row, and visible. Okay, and that should pass everything there. So we don't have a percent %d, so what we should get is invalid format specifier. Let me make sure that works first. We don't have any attribute there because these all need to be prefixed with dereferencing the mode structure. 
So let's do that first. Okay. It did not print. Oh, it did print invalid, but it didn't return. Invalid format specifier D. Current mode D attribute. So it did a. That is not really what I wanted to happen. <laughs> Go back to that. It should exit the whole thing, is what I wanted to happen, which is VA end. Oh, but that was the rest of the string. That's true. I printed out the whole string for that. Because that was the rest of the format string. <laughs> um, or let me set this. I'll set this. And then I'll print out string instead. Yep. And then we'll print a new line. There we go. So it'll only print out that character is what I want to do, not the whole string itself. Okay. So invalid format specifier percent D. Sorry, I keep... I'll get my keybinds sorted eventually. It's just I got to do some like Emacs pinky curls and stuff here, which is annoying. But we have the percent D shown there. Right here. So that's good. I mean, it's not good that... It's broken, but it's good that our error handling works. So, okay, so this is a string. And let's just copy this. And we'll have a D, so let's say print int. Um, we'll say 32, because it's not, maybe we'll do L, LD. Right now, we'll just have it be int 32. And the argument we get, we just have to change the type here that we're retrieving from the argument list will be int32. So that means we need an int32. And I'll just call it a number. We're not going to do a pointer. I'll just call it a number. So how do we print a number? I might make another function for that. <laughs> Possibly. That would probably be good. We can have like a buffer. That might be better to have a buffer. So what... What is an int32 max value, right? 4 billion, because it's signed, so 2 billion, whatever. All right, so 2 billion something to negative 2 billion something. So how many digits is that? So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to make a 10 digit or character buffer for numbers, we'll just say. So string will be 2. This will be a character, though. Do care. My name means bad. Sorry about this, but I'm going to call this char string just to differentiate things. It's a string for a single character, which is not great, but let's do that. All right, so let's have another buffer here, and we'll say um, buffer or a number buffer. I'll just call it a regular buffer 10 characters. Enough for an int32, or we'll say maybe enough for int32 max, hopefully, without the negative sign. I guess if we want the sign, then we should make it 11. So let's do that. Okay. So let's say initialize buffers here. We don't have to do this, at least in the future we won't. Um, do i equals zero i less than the size of this. I guess I need a, an array size thing. Right now we'll do 11. But again, I'll write memset maybe soon, maybe on the next one, so we don't have to do this, but <laughs> uh, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so just initialize these here. Okay, so how do we want to do this if we're getting an int32? I'm going to call something else to print. So we'll say print number. We'll say your print int32 or something. Right now we'll just say print number and I'll pass in number. Um, with labels and go-tos, we can have sort of subroutines within a procedure. And I'm just saying that because we have a better way of handling that at work than RPG. Or if you have something like Ada or Pascal or something, I think also has these. C doesn't really have nested functions, as it were. Um, and I don't want to 
really expand my go-to variable label use right now. So let's just do this here. And have a separate function that we call, so I just called it print number. And preemptively I'll set it to a bool. And we'll do this. All right, so what is this gonna do? We have a buffer that we pass in. Actually, we can put that, we don't need it here. So let me get rid of that. I'll put that up here. We'll have a buffer. And I also wanna make a digit string to make this a little bit easier. We can print hex out with this later as well. If we wanna do that, we can have a separate thing for hex or call a separate uh, function for this. We could use like a macro and make generic so that we call print number with a type and it'll call different functions. Maybe I'll get fancy with that. Um, for right now, just to, for argument's sake, I'm not gonna be printing hex from this, but we'll say we have numbers going up to hex, right? That's an array, and if we set that, uh, it's gonna be this. I'm not doing an array, so I don't think we'll need mem set for that. No, we are okay there. Okay. Um, 46. Oh, I'm setting buffer here. Yeah, I don't need to do that here. All right, up here I will. Initialize buffer. I don't have that down there. Just want to make sure I don't have issues right now. Just unused parms. Okay. So I want to do while our number is greater than zero, we'll say. If it is zero, we'll still go through and print it. So I could have a do while. Let's do that. So do while our number is greater than zero. So we go through at least once. We want to set each digit in the buffer, so let me do that. So buffer, we'll say we have i. And that will equal number modulo 10. And then we'll have number divide equal by 10. So starting at zero, we'll get the next ending digit of the number. So if number equals like one, two, three, we'll modulo 10, we'll get this three, we'll put it into the buffer at position zero, we'll divide by 10. And let's do I plus plus here. So it'll be pointing to the first position. If that's greater than zero, that digit will effectively be chopped off by dividing by 10. We'll get the next modulo 10. We'll put two in the buffer after one, chop that off, one in the buffer after two, chop that off. Then we'll be at zero from integer truncation and stuff there. So what do we do now that we have the buffer? Effectively the buffer, if we give a number one, two, three, the buffer is going to be three, two, one. So we need to reverse this and print it out. Because um, if we point to the start of the buffer and we print that, we're gonna print 321 and not 123. So we kind of have to reverse that. So say reverse digits in buffer before printing. And we have the ending I there. So what I'm gonna do there, um, Say null terminate string first. So we'll null terminate that with the char 16t null. Then we want to reverse the digits. So let's we let's say we have j equal the current i position. Or j can be zero actually. So we can do buffer i minus minus. So j can be equal to zero. So we'll say four. We can just make this a for loop. J less than i, j plus plus. We'll do a little sort of in place uh, string reversal here. Temp will equal i or j. We'll say temp can equal i buffer i equals j buffer j equals temp. That's how a basic swap works, right? So temp will be the ending character. Buffer that will equal zero. J will equal so J plus plus, let's do I minus minus. J will equal that, okay. So if we have something like three, two, one, J would equal this one, or wait, no, J would equal zero, J would be equal to the three, and I would be pointing to the one. So temp will equal the one. 
Yeah, okay. So we have if we have a string like 321, so temp will be set equal to probably buffer i I want to do here actually. Buffer i would be buffer j. Let me do this. Uh-huh. So if i is pointing to the 1, temp would be equal to the 1. Buffer i where this position is equals buffer where this position is at 0. So the 3 would move over here. And then buffer j still pointing at 0 would equal temp, which was the original 1. So it would do that. And then they'd both increment, and it would go here, and it would say it's not less than it would exit. If we had a larger number, like 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we were at both ends, temp would equal 1 to start off, j would be pointing to the 5, so buffer i would equal the 5, or j would equal the 1, and we'd increment j and decrement i, they'd be pointing to the 4 and the 2, we'd swap those, and then we'd go to the middle and we'd stop, right? So that should work and be all right. So then after that we want to print the string, Since we ended with a null, we null terminated, that is all right. What that effectively means is I don't need to do this, but whatever. <laughs> Probably don't need to do that, actually. Unless there isn't anything to begin with, we would not have incremented, well, it'll increment at least once. So that'll be all right. But to print it out, we do output string, C out, and whatever our buffer is. It's an int, we're not printing like, a, a 0x or whatever to begin with. Um, the only issue with this is that it doesn't print negative numbers. This is only unsigned. So that's not great. How would we want to print negative numbers? Um, I mean, we could get that from here and see if it's negative or not. Could do this easily enough. So if it's negative, I won't terminate the string. I'll say prep end minus sign if negative. So I plus plus will say if, if negative buffer I plus plus will equal the minus sign, which is a literal char 16. Can't press the key, there we go. Um, just do that. And then that'll also increment past it, and then we'll do this. Okay, and then that'll print a null, so that'll be all right. Uh, it won't print the null, it'll stop at the null. So here, if we have a negative one, two, three, the swapping will swap the negative characters first. Um, it would be opposite, actually. Let's say it'd be three, two, one, negative. So if we did this, it would swap the negative and the three, and then go up and swap the one and the two, and then they'd both be equal, and it wouldn't do that. So, okay, that should be all right. Hopefully for negative numbers, I don't know. We won't print negative hex, but I have that in the digit string, so, okay. Uh, expected semicolon after a while, that's true. Because I have, yep, didn't see that, because I am blind and get tunnel vision. Thanks to foreigner. Okay, we're not using digits. Um, why did I make digits to begin with? I had a reason for that. Oh, <laughs> I can't do anything right, guys. I'm sorry. We have an array of characters, of char 16t characters, which are multiple bytes, but the array of characters can be used as an array that we offset into to transform an integer into a character, into an ASCII normally, but here char 16t. So if the number is zero, we're gonna offset into this zero and we'll retrieve the character for zero. If the number is eight, because we're moduloing by 10, so it'll only, it'll only go up to nine. So if the number is eight, then we'll offset up to here and we'll grab the character for eight and put that in the buffer, which is char 16t. That's the whole reason I used digits. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's a constant also, but okay. Um, it doesn't matter to add constant there, but all right. So we don't get anything, okay. I have no guarantee that these are actually correct values right now. I just wanted to print something out. So current text mode, I don't think reflects where the cursor is. <laughs> Although at the point at which we called the function, it did, because it would be at the line after this, right? We'd go down one line. So at that point, with, this, with the carriage return and line feed, the cursor would be at 
line one or row one and column zero. That's correct. Current mode is zero. That's probably true. Max mode is five. That's probably true. The attribute is 30, which would be um, blue. I guess that's right. I don't know if the attribute's correct. Well, the attribute's not hex. So that's 30 in decimal. Hex would be not 32. So it would be one E should be blue and yellow. So that does make sense. Yellow and blue. Uh, cursor column invisible. We are printing maybe. I don't know. It says the cursor is visible. Okay. The only other thing I want to add to that is whatever our lines by rows are, our, our rows by column value. We don't have that. So I do want to add that. And that is not available within the mode structure, I don't think. So we would have to call query mode because query mode returns the number of lines and columns. So we can do that. So let's say we have columns and rows here. I'll say max because they're going to be the maximum for the current uh, mode. So let's say max columns and max rows. I'll just set these equal to zero. Um, I'll put it after here. And we'll call it here. So let's do query mode, which would be C out still. And we need a mode number. And the mode number, of course, would be mode mode for the current mode. <laughs> so what query mode is going to do is have me forget what it looks like. <laughs> if I text query mode. So we just pass them right after the mode number. Okay. So we need pointers. So we'll do, we'll do max columns and then rows. Max columns and max rows. And we'll have those there. So after visible, we can do that. Max columns and max rows. And that'll put there columns and then rows. That should be correct. Okay. All right, and then we can see if query mode works. And again, I should probably test for a uh, error on output from calling these functions. Um, oh, well. So let's say get current text modes, uh, column and row count. Counts, I don't know. We're not setting a mode, but we'll just see what info we get there. I'm exiting because I got warnings here. Incompatible types, parameter uint n. Uh, that's true, but the values are int32, are they not? The value, oh, the values are uint n. Why is it inconsistent? <laughs> the row and column values we can have for the cursor are int32, but the maximum number is uint n. That doesn't seem right. Stupid spec writers, what are they doing? No, that's all right. Uh, we'll do uint n then, that's fine. We'll make those uint 64s and we'll still print them as uint 32s though. I think that should truncate on the call. Yeah, so that should be all right, okay. All right, so by default, this is correct, I think, but by default in QEMU and OVMF here, we have 80 by 25, right? So that is our, our text mode we're currently in, or whatever this square is, is 80 by 25. And it's been a little over an hour. My voice is dying a little bit. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. I'm trying to get back in the groove of things. So as always, <laughs> try not to have multiple months between videos. It's really not my goal, but anyway. Um, but I'm gonna wrap it up here so the video is not too long and on the next one, I'm going to get input. Sorry, I didn't get input on this one. I just um, got a little got a little uh, flubbered or whatever, which is that's that green jelly dude. But I got a little <laughs> confused and when I'm writing numbers. So I do want to write hexadecimal numbers. So I'll probably rename this to write print int. But on the next one, I do want to take in and do uh, input. 
So getting, getting an actual input and typing and showing it on the screen. Now that we can print stuff at a basic level, we should be able to do that. So I'm going to do that on the next one. All right, so we'll call that print int and I'm going to remove that because we're not printing hex. So printing hex will look similar. I guess I could do that right now, actually. Let's do that right now, right? Right when I'm going to end, right? <laughs> uh, that's all right. It's gonna look similar. I know it's not It's not great. Print an integer int for two. Print a hex, hexadecimal integer. Say int 64, because it's gonna be, well, we can say int 32, but technically it's gonna be u int n, so. Say u int n. Because hex doesn't really care. Although there, there might be some issues if we put something smaller on the stack when we're calling printf, this might be buggy. So if we put like an int32 sized or four byte value and we say print eight bytes, that might not necessarily be correct, but oh well. But the difference here, other than changing the function signature in the name for printing hex, um, we want this to be bigger, 16. It, we're not gonna have um, probably UNN max. So it'll be, well, it might be a lot bigger than, I forget how big we can do. Let's, let's just make it 20. I don't remember how big we need, so we can change that as we need later. We won't have negative numbers though. Um, hex or octal or whatever, we could have a thing just print any generic thing and we pass in the base. That might be better actually. Ooh, that would be better. Let me do that. That would be better. Then I don't have to duplicate all this stuff. Um, we won't pass in the sign if it's hex or octal or something unless you really want to, but. Although this is just int32, an integer, that's funny. Um, we, can, we can do this. Okay, let, me, let me go back. I was gonna say we could put all this in one thing and I might do that. We could call one function and pass a base and just offset by the base into here depending on what we're doing. I might do that in the future. So I'm sorry I'm going back and forth and being confusing myself right now, but. Uh, we actually don't need this stuff. So let's just say we have two separate things to keep it simple. We can combine them later and refactor as needed. Uh, this all should be the same, uh, but okay. So we can offset by this again, except it'll be number mod, whatever base we're doing. We're gonna do 16 as the base here. So that's why I'm saying we could set a base number and do mod by the base in one function, but I'm gonna worry about that later, uh, but okay. And then number divided by that base, so it'll be zero to 15. And if it's 10 or above, we should get A through F here. And before we terminate, I want to prep end. It'll be A pending to the buffer, but prep end, I'll say final string with zero X. So we'll have it be, it needs to be backwards, remember. So we'll do the X first and then the zero and then we'll terminate it with a null and then we'll print that out and we'll output it. So that's for printing hex. So let's say in printf, we'll have this, we'll have an x. So let's say print hex, you went in, x number, you went in. So let's say we grab that from there and we do, instead of print int, we call print hex. This will print int. So we'll do that. Okay, and if I want to test that, let's put another new line here as well before this point. Let's test that here. We'll do hex test. So let's say testing hex percent x, and we'll do I can cast it just to make sure, but we'll do hex uh, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. We'll just send that as a literal and hope that it prints that. So that's a 32 bit. It's one, two, three, four bytes, five, six, seven, eight bytes. So we'll see how that works. 
double new line. Hey, and there we go. Let's print that out there. There we go, testing hex. So we can print out hexadecimal numbers now. That'll be useful later if we want to print like the value of a pointer or an address or stuff like that. And we can print out the current text mode stuff. So on the next video, because I'm trying to keep this under an hour and a half right now. <laughs> on the next video, we'll do inputs. We'll take an input for a keystroke. I'll do a little wait event loop instead of a busy loop. I might show the busy loop first, but it's less, since we're doing like a while true loop here, it uses more resources than we need. We can do a, an event loop wait instead, which doesn't need a loop necessarily if you only get one keystroke at a time. But anyway, it'll use less resources because it's the firmware should be suited for using events and not um, just having a busy loop. Uh, for input at least, that'd be a better way to go about it. Um, other than that, I think I'll probably take an input by, let's say we make a menu and choose the text mode we want to do. And then we can sort of copy that later for choosing a graphics mode. So let's say we have a menu of choices, maybe choice one is set a text mode. And then we can print the text modes available by query, calling query text mode for info. We can print their info and we can take an input to set mode one or two or whatever that you choose. And then we'll set the mode with calling set mode. And we can, you know, test what that looks like on here and on hardware. So we'll do that. All right, Jackie, one more thing. For negative numbers, this is not going to work. Because <laughs> we have the do loop to set the digits while, num while number is positive. Uh, what if it's negative? I didn't put in a test for that. So obviously I see that after I record the footage and then have to splice this in here because I made a, an oopsie daisy. That's all right. So let's, let's say we do this before negative. We need the number to be above zero. That's fine. What I can do then is say, if we always want to do this code here, we can just say, if it's negative number equals negative number, you know, and then what is that? Or another way of doing a not effectively, but inverting the bits, that's not necessarily a not, but making positive into negative is what I mean, negative into positive. So if we have negative 123, this will be 123, we'll prep in a negative sign, and then we'll print it out, okay? And it's n32, which is a sign number. So if we go along, print f, we give it an n32, that should be fine. So let's test negative numbers as well. After hex, let's do negative int test, testing negative ints, or just one negative int. So let's say int32, let's say we have negative um, 54321. So we'll do that. Let's do just a single new line after hex, then we'll have this and we'll go on. All right, negative 54321. So that way <laughs> we pass it a negative, it makes it positive, and then it decrements the thing. So, you know, that's all right. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we had negatives working and it wasn't completely buggy. It probably still is, but that's all right. Um, if this is where I end the video and not previously, or depending how I splice this in on the next one, I want to get an input through a busy loop and then fix that, fix that, and make it like a more proper wait event loop for getting a keystroke. Maybe printing the key data if we want, I don't know. But possibly making like a little menu where it presents the current text mode choices and we can choose the text mode to use. Because on hardware, that might be different sizes of the text, not just the different size of a bounding box that the text is printed in, which QEMU has, as far as I know. Um, the SDL back in for display and not GTK, I think, changes the size of the characters. I might mess with that. But for the GTK one I'm using to zoom in and out, I don't think it changes the character size, even if you change the text mode to be small or something. So anyway, that'll be on the next one. We'll have text input, more text output, possibly a little menu system to take input and choose the text mode by the user. So look forward to that. Appreciate you all watching. Greatly appreciate it. And maybe I can do more of these and not wait so long between videos. We'll see. <laughs> but thank you regardless and cheers.